Good afternoon. Good evening. I pray all is well with you and your family and your household. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment right here, right now. We know that it is anointed and written. So God, I ask for you to allow it to unfold the way you've written it and not allow, and don't not, please Lord, don't allow me to add anything or take anything away from what you want to happen in this moment. Remove me and my sister and brother and add all of you, not unto us, but unto you be all the glory. Lord, please increase so that we, we may decrease, not my will, but your will be done. Speak to us, Lord, with a fresh word, fresh revelation, fresh anointing, fresh oil, and fresh wine, and new wine skin. And help us to not grieve over the old, but to be rejoiceful over the new. We thank you, Abba, for this day, and right here, right now, we thank you for it. In your holy name, Christ Jesus, Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God, the Word made flesh, we pray, amen, and amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, there was a Holy Thursday where our Messiah, the Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, had supper with his disciples. But it wasn't just any ordinary supper that they were used to or accustomed to. There were differences there. This time he asked for the cup. The cup, meaning the cup of salvation that they drank from, versus that cup set for a long, long time. But it was only for the Messiah, and he called for the cup this very night, which already alarmed them to, you know, because even though one of his disciples, Simon Peter, Simon, who was later to be called Peter, received he was actually one of the first disciples to receive the revelation that Jesus is the son of God and so even though that revelation was made chapters because this dinner this supper was in the holy book of Matthew chapter 26 and it's also in Luke John and Mark but I want to say that in chapter 16 is when the revelation came through once Jesus asked, who do the people say that I am? It was Peter who said, you are the son of God. You are the chosen. Okay. So even though they had heard this before, they still was mummerings about them when it came to him asking for the cup. And also there were mummerings when he said in that dinner, when the Lord Jesus said in that dinner that I must suffer many things and die. And there was also mummerings that somebody at this very table that is going to dip their bread in this vinegar is going to betray me. There was a lot of mummering that night, to say the least. And so in this dinner, he gave them the... Example of the blood that he must shed and his body that must be beaten and killed or must die. Because they didn't kill Jesus. Let's just say that. He willingly gave his life. They thought they killed him. He was allowing prophecy to unfold the way it was meant to be. So the blood that had to be shed from him the only pure being that has ever walked this earth had to be shed for me and you to live because the curse that was upon all mankind and it needed only but one pure vessel a sacrifice a human sacrifice that would free us from that which would allow us to live an eternal life eternity with father god the creator of heaven and earth the beginning and the end the alpha and the omega so Jesus came in flesh covered him the word made flesh he was already spoken about generations and generations and thousands and thousands of billions of years ago he was already there but he came into the earth as man and his name was Yeshua Hamashiach translated Christ Jesus translated the chosen one salvation now at this supper the disciples still didn't quite understand this. We do in hindsight, years and years later, we know what he meant. But at that moment, they didn't. 
which is why we should always give grace to our brethren, sisters and brothers who don't quite understand things the way God has revealed it to you. They may not understand it yet, but they may just get it later. So we must be graceful and have soft heart and tenderness towards those that don't understand what we're talking about even right now. They just don't get it right now the same way we didn't get it at some point. Even Paul said there was a time where we once dwelt in the darkness. And now that we are children of the light, we walk in the light. We must also take heed to who we judge. Because the disciples who walked beside Jesus for many years, well, for about three and a half years, three years, they didn't even quite understand his ministry. They knew that he was different. They knew that he was special. They knew that there was something about his light that was in, in somebody else. No one else had the light that he had. Yet they couldn't quite. It, there was obvious confusion in the camp when Jesus explained that he must die at the hands of those who despise the truth. Most of them at that time were church people, religious people, I should say. Now, at this dinner, he allowed them to understand deeper his purpose, yet he knew they wouldn't understand it until after it would be fulfilled. Because even the record shows that once Jesus rose from the dead, um, there was a woman, Mary of Magdala, who was anointed to see him first, thus making her the first evangelist, the first witness. She went and told the brethren, she told the other disciples who walked beside Jesus with her as well for those years of his ministry, yet they didn't believe her. And there was even a disciple that said, I won't believe it till I see the holes in his hand myself. I got to feel the piercing in his side myself before I can believe this man has come back to life. So even though we know that they didn't quite understand it then and then they understood it after they saw him again. It's why God wants us to have grace for each other who may not see what you see right now or hear what you hear right now. Because God knows the heart of man. We look at the outside and he knows the inside and the beginning and the end of every man. Now, there was a time when Peter, like I said, when he discovered, when he, not discovered, when he, when the revelation came to him that when Jesus said in chapter 16 of Matthew, the Holy Book of Matthew, who do people say I am? He, they were all saying, well, they say you're a prophet. They say that you're a healer. They say that you're a great teacher. You're this and you're that. It was Peter that said, you're the son of God. You're the Christ. The anointed one is what Christ means. Christ is not his last name. Christ is what he is. The anointed one of God. We are anointed if we receive this news and we know it to be true. He is the anointed one. The originator. Often men imitate it, but never can they take his place. Now, <clears throat> in the, in the, um, after Peter received that revelation and made it known to Jesus that you are the son of God. Jesus said, he actually told him, I will build my church upon you. Now, if you fast forward to 26, this was chapter 16, go down, go forward 10 chapters. Peter denied Jesus. I don't know him. I don't know him. After the dinner was, was eaten, he denied knowing him. That's just a fact. But did Jesus take the church off of Peter? Did she, Jesus take the anointing off of Peter? Did Peter get excommunicated and, and shifted off somewhere and never to be seen again? No. He was used in mighty, 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 mighty ways. Even after Jesus died, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. Awaiting his arrival back into this world to retrieve his children. Peter was used. Now we're going to go, what we're going to do is we're going to read shortly a few scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 26 of, ex, of, of where God gave me a fresh rubber. He just, he impressed upon me in the most loving way of a situation that Peter found himself in. Yet how God, Jesus in the flesh, loved him and continued to love him. And then we're going to take part in the last supper which is in that same chapter 
but we're, what we're going to read is going to be a little bit past the supper part. This is going to be when they walked out into the garden after supper. Matthew chapter 26. If you have your Bible, open it up. Open it up and read with me. Help me hold it, Jesus. Okay. Oops. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I had to take my extra stuff out. I take my extra stuff out. I hope I didn't pull this mic out, but I'm going to roll with it. So remember, we're going to read a little bit past where they had the supper. We're going to go back to the supper and we're going to take the supper together. But we're going to go past that and read because the Lord gave me a fresh revelation of Peter um, shortly after dinner. And it's going to help somebody. It's the reason God does what he does. One moment. Got to get in the light because I want to be able to read clearly. All right. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We're going to start at. Um, this is right after dinner. We're going to go back to the dinner and do dinner together. But this is right after dinner. The Holy Book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 30. We're going to start there. Whoa. One moment. All right. I had to reconnect the mic. All right, everything is where it ought to be. No more, no more stopping. The sun is moving, but you ain't got to worry about seeing me. Just here. Verse 30. And when they had sung a hymn, and they went out to the Mount of Olives, 31, then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Now, he'd already told them what would happen. Verse 32, But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. See, Peter was really bold. I mean, he felt it. He felt it in his heart. Like, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm not going to be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That at this night, before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice, three times. In other words, Peter, I, I already know you're going you're gonna to sell me out. I mean, I get it. Jesus knows all things. Now, remember, he had already told Peter in, in the chapter 16. See, when God says something, it doesn't return back void. He told Peter, I'm going to build my church on you in chapter 16. But in verse 26, he had already, he telling him here, before the cock crow, you're going to deny me three times. Verse 35, Peter said unto him, though I shall, should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also shall all the disciples in other words well i can't deny you if i die with you verse 36 then come and jesus with them into a place called gethsemane and said unto the disciples sit ye here while i go and pray yonder and verse 37 says and he took with him peter and two sons of zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy then said he unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me that's what Jesus is saying. Look, I'm have. That's how you know he feels what we feel because it says he exceeding sorrowful even unto death. He didn't come, even though he's God in the flesh. He came here as a man to feel man things, to feel man's emotions, even man's pain. He felt and feels to this day. The Bible says he feels what we feel. So he's telling them there. I have a lot going on my mind. I have a lot. My, I'm just exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, how many times have you had to fall on your face and pray? This is the Lord falling on his face and praying. Glory be to God. Saying, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So he's saying here, Lord, because he's praying to his father. 
also setting a great example for us. Look, I know this is a lot you asking me to do, but if you can find some other way to do it, can you let it pass me by? That's being real right there. And he went a little further. I'm sorry. But guess what? He said, nevertheless, not as I will, but thou wilt be done. So he is telling us, it's written, he was feeling exceedingly sorrowful. He even asked his friends to wait for him and wait with him as he prayed. And yet, even in his moment of duress and heaviness and extreme calamity malice in his not malice but that 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 heavy it says here exceedingly sorrowful when is the last time have you been exceeding sorrowful that's what he was feeling and yet he tells our heavenly father not my will but your will be done in other words i trust you let your will go as it's supposed to be all right and he come at verse 40 and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, what could you not watch with me for one hour? How many times have you asked your friends to be there for you and they don't even go past five minutes before they give in or throw in a towel and say, oh, I'm done. I can't. I'm done with this. Or, OK, you got it. Or you'll be all right. You'll be OK. So the same Peter whom he said, I will build my church on you. Also. He told him 10 chapters later, you're going to deny me tonight, Peter. And then as he goes and pray, as he's being a seed and sorrowful, I would anticipate or I will. I can think maybe he needed a friend with him because he said, can you? He says here, could you not watch me one hour? And verse 41, watch and pray that you enter and not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak, which is very true. He's telling that to us even now. Watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That goes for us as well. Chapter um, Verse 41. 42. He went away the second time and prayed. Oh, saying, oh, my father, if this cup not, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Still asking the father, please give me mercy. Uh, Lord, help me. This is a lot. You, this is a lot. I mean, he came here to do amazing amazing things but it had to go through some excruciatingly amazingly horrific he had to go through a lot to get us to salvation he sacrificed literally my lord and so he's once again telling the lord not my will but your will be done thank you jesus verse 43 and he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words. He three times he went asking the father. So if you feel as being a child of God, well, I've already asked the Lord. And if you have somebody over your shoulder telling you, why are you praying that again? Let it go. Jesus prayed three times for the same thing. Even the Bible says that there, Jesus gave a parable of a woman who even was talking to or asking this judge who didn't even believe in God. She was asking this judge to give her mercy. He went on and did it not because of the God she served, the Bible said, because he didn't have no faith in the God she served, which is our father. But because she was just getting on his nerves, she got on his, she, this woman asking me so many times, go ahead and give her what she want, get her out of my hair. So who tells you? That you're praying too much is somebody that don't know their Bible and they don't know the word and they don't know the presence of God because he wants us with him at all times in all things. No matter if you got to say the same, even though the Bible says don't repeat the same words over and over like the heathen. In other words, if the prayer is written down, repeating that over and over is just a ritual. It's no longer a prayer. A prayer is a conversation. However, to go to God with the same thing. And you're being able to talk to him about the same thing. is not repetitive prayer. That's you really and truly leaning on the father. Because it says here Jesus spoke three times to the father. Three times. And for the same thing. He's encouraging us to talk to him. No matter how many times you feel you talking to him about it. Talk to him about it. And so here the Lord says um, in verse 44. 
And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Verse 45, Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand that the Son of Man is betrayed at the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Now, remember in verse in chapter 16, the Lord told Peter, that he asked his disciples, Who am I? Who do the, who do the people say that I am? And the people were, he, they said, they saying you're a prophet. They're saying you are a healer, a physician. they saying you are a great minister, a great teacher. But it was Peter that said, You are the Son of God. You are the chosen one of God. Sorry. Every time the thing move, I got to fix it because I don't want it to go out. You are the chosen one of God. And so that's when Jesus said, I will build my church on you, on, upon you, upon you. I will build my church. Even though Peter, if you go further, I'm not going to go further to read, but I will tell you this further on. When they came after that, after they prayed, they did come and um, Judas Iscariot did sell Jesus out. With the kids, he kissed them to let them know which one is Jesus. They came, arrested Jesus. Peter even sliced the man's neck off to take up for Jesus. And yet, Jesus put that man's ear back. Because what had to be done had to be done. He didn't come here to be rescued. He came here to die for his children and to rise again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. So now, Peter goes on and then he's warming himself up by the fire off from where Jesus was um, arrested at but he didn't want to be known that he was a follower of Jesus not to know because he didn't know what they would end up doing with him this is a real situation where they brought Jesus in front of a multitude of people a multitude of people standing there by himself in front of these accusers these liars they end up punching Jesus in the face covering his eyes and punching him saying well you you such a prophet won't you prophesy who just punched you the Bible says they did that they treated him horribly spit in his face did awful things saying awful things about him and yet a woman said, that's Peter. Oh, well, she didn't say his name. She said, that man there, oh, he was walking with, with, with Yeshua. He was walking with Jesus. He, and he said, I wouldn't. He cussed. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Then he heard the cock crow. What did Jesus say? You're going to deny me. But if you go further on and read further on, once Jesus comes out the grave, walks, and then once he meets his um, disciples in Galilee, like he said he would do, he charged them to go and preach this same gospel that we're preaching right now, that Jesus is coming back for us. He did not say, well, Peter, you denied me. You got to go. Peter, you you cussed. You got to go. Peter, you, you cut that man in off. off. I told you I have to do this. You got to go. He didn't. And any other things that wasn't written that Peter did, because none of us is perfect. No, he stuck with the word. When God chooses you, it is your anointing. Can't nobody take it off of you. Fear can push you away from God, but he will never push you away from you. And that dinner, that supper, was true to form exactly how he was describing. Because the bread, he had to be, he had, his, he had to be torn down in his flesh. Because we were torn down in our flesh. And his blood had to flow. Because that's everlasting blood that's everlasting power in his blood and that sealed the deal and it gave us new life because the enemy it was now once that blood flowed jesus lowered his head and died the enemy was defeated because you can't hold the real one down the real one the anointed because he came out that grave three days later he did some work down there Excuse me. the bible says he did go he went to hell he did some preaching down there took back the keys of life and came out and gave it to us that's a real true hero that's a real true father that's a real true god who will go and take not only what we did wrong but forgive it and pay the price that we owed because of the wrongdoing that we did that's love and ain't nobody gonna ever do and give you what he has done and given us free eternal life through belief that he did die and rose and he will even give you heaven on earth by the ability to be in his presence by repentance and repentance is to ask him to walk out of the dark with the things you know you're doing and even the things you don't know you're doing against him walk me out of it call it out lord help me to call it out and walk me out of it and then when he leads you out of it is when you truly are repentive your heart has to repent before your body 
And the way your heart repents is to go to the one that created the heart in the first place. And his name is Jesus. Lord Yeshua, Jehovah, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Yahweh. He knows. And the Holy Ghost, the Ruach HaKodesh, will get you there through guidance and leadership, through how he leads you. And the Bible is, necess is a necessity. It is not an option. You got to get to know him. But let me tell you, it is not about, oh, I want to, as that bluebird. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I want to show off that I know all these scriptures. It's not about that. He talking in here. When you really read in it, the spirit will talk with you. Ask him to unscramble the words and to talk with you and to give you revelation. Each time you pick it up, you're going to learn something new about yourself. Because what's going to happen, he's going to talk to you. This is not no play thing. And this is not no hoodoo voodoo magician stuff. This is reality. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And ain't nobody else to do what he did. So grab a piece of bread and a piece of, um, and a cup of juice. And let's get ready to take and partake. Many years ago, on a, this, on a Thursday like this one, there was a dinner in the evening time. Even the place was anointed. They, he told the disciples to go. And you're going to see a man doing this. Ask him. Doing. A, um, what was he hurting? I don't want to quote the scripture wrong. But there was a man that was anointed to do. To give them that upper room. God speaks to your help. Before you get there. They already know what you need. But you got to get there. How you get there is follow the Lord. The Lord knows what you need. Your provision is already in place. In front of you. Stop looking back. Like. Lot's wife. Thank you, Jesus. Go grab a piece of bread and a cup of juice. If you don't have any juice, there was many years ago. Not even many. No, it wasn't many years ago. I didn't have no juice. I couldn't afford it. So I just had water. I asked the Lord. I said, well, you want me to do communion? But and I do it with him by myself a lot. And I said, well, how am I doing? All I got is water. He said, I'm going to change it to wine in spirit. So he accepted that. And so if you don't have access to no um, juice, don't fret. God knows. Thank you, Jesus. As you're getting a, a, a piece of bread, a cracker, or whatever you have, um, bread-wise, I'm going to sing a little hymn as you're getting it together to usher us, this, usher us into that moment. <clears throat> The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength from day to day, you will never lose His power. <clears throat> the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. He reaches to the highest mountain And it flows to the lowest valley Oh yes, the blood 
that give us strength from day to day. It will never lose. Listen, it will never lose. It will never, never, never lose. It's power. It will lose. It's power. He'll never lose. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the Holy Book of Matthew, chapter 26. We're still in chapter 26. It says, we're going to go back. Because remember, we went a little ahead to speak about Jesus praying and asking them to pray with him. But we're going to go back to where they actually sat and they had dinner. And he, it says here on verse 26, Matthew 26, verse 26, the Holy Book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. That's what we're going to do. Get your bread. Ooh. Such a beautiful day. We thank you, Jesus, for this right here. This moment right here. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. And it says here. After he blessed it. He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Let's eat. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Verse 26. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood, the New Testament, which is shed for the many, shared for many, for the remission of sins. Remission means to clean it off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's drink our wine, our juice, our water. I mean, the Lord is with you. I don't want any to spill. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's, as it said, they sung a hymn. I did spill a little bit. That's okay. And as it says here, after that, oh, I'm sorry, my page flipped. That's why. <laughs> and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Okay. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus, it's Jesus in my soul. Let's move. For I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole. Oh, it is Jesus. Never done this before, but the Lord is directing me. Hold on. Lord say we're gonna do a new thing. We're gonna do a new thing. Lord say we're gonna do a new thing. We're gonna do a new thing. How about that? I've never moved my camera before in mid um, meeting with us together. They chasing butterflies. 
Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of your garment. And your blood has made me whole. It's a true story. I've tried all I could. Seemed like nothing did me any good. Then I heard Jesus. He was passing by. Then I decided to give him a try, Lord, oh, it is Jesus, yes, it is Jesus, it's Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of your garment. And his blood has made us whole. Thank you, Jesus, for making us whole. Thank you, Jesus. You are everything I ever thought I needed. Everything I ever dreamed of is you. I'm not afraid to say it. Thank you. I hope you're not either. I enjoyed having supper with you. Um, watch this as often as you need be. Watch it with your husband. Watch it with your children. Watch it with whomever needs to be filled. Because this is not me. If I rewatch videos that God has me to put out... I ask him to remove me from seeing myself and uh, he does do that and it touches me, it heals me and convicts me in the ways that I need because these words don't be from me. So I just want you to know it ain't about me. It ain't even about you. It's about the love that God has given us and that's when you truly receive the healing that we've prayed for. Thank you, Jesus. My dogs are doing something very silly, so I got to go. But I am grateful that this moment lived. Thank you, Jesus. And have a beautiful day. And in closing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. And make his face to shine upon us. And to be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us. Gotta pick the mic up. Because I know you ain't gonna hear me. And give us peace. In the name of Jesus. Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Shalom. Amen. It's 1722 on a clock. That means 522. 522, Galatians 5, chapter 22. If Galatians 5 talking about the Beatitudes. And 1722, Proverbs 17, verse 22 is speaking of a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a woeful spirit dries the bones, which means be cheerful because that'll heal you. That's medicine. To be all down and out and allow yourself to be in that way without letting, allowing the Lord to help you, ask him. To help you, it's going to dry your spirit out. And that ain't good. It dries your bones. Not your physical bones, but your spiritual bones. So, you know, that's just a little tidbit. 522, 1722. Galatians 5, verse 22. And on in 1722. Proverbs. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.